Hi, I'm Kelly and welcome to Kapowski Reads and it is time for my TBR game for April. April already? So before I go through my upcoming TBR, let's see how I got on with my March TBR. Did I read the books? Um, yes. Yes, I did. So the first prompt I had last month was a book with a person on the cover and I chose Dead Girls Walking by Sammy Ellis. This book, I, I did a vlog about this book. I loved this book. I, I'll pop a link in the description uh, for anyone who wants to watch me rave about how much I loved this book. I gave it five shiny, shiny stars. It was fantastic. My next prompt was to pick a book with a one word title. I went with Minaret by Leila Abu Leila and I enjoyed this book. It was very, it felt very vulnerable and like quite, oh, I don't want to say emotional. Like I didn't cry, but I felt a lot. So that yeah, that's literally the definition of emotional. This is a Scottish Sudanese author who lives in Aberdeen and I felt I felt like it was wrong of me to have not read any of her work and I have remedied that so far and I would like to read more books by this author. And my last prompt from my TBR game was a five star prediction and I went with If on a winter's night a traveller by Italo Calvino. This book was bizarre, so strange. I didn't give it five stars because I didn't love it but I really liked it so it was it was a four and I feel like that's that kind that counts as a success I don't find it difficult to give a five star book book a five star rating I feel if it's if it's due like five stars for me is not it's not maths it's not formulaic it's it's in my heart if my heart says it's five stars it's five stars so um uh, not hard for me to give five stars to to books but I did enjoy this it was very strange it was basically just chapters of different books merged together into one book it wasn't a cohesive storyline it was written in such an unusual way and the book was written first in 1980 so it it is quite dated sometimes but I had I had a good time and I'm very glad I read it it was so strange so let's get on to my rules for April I have books I want to get on my TBR and I really really want to get them on and I'm going to find a way to like shoehorn them in as best I can rule number one 13 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 green um, a, a library book. Rule number one was a green prompt which was a library book. I have, if you've been here a wee while, hello welcome back. I have been frequenting my library a lot more this year because I have been, I've been on a book buying ban with the exception of pre-orders and usually I was a huge fan of my library's online catalogue but I didn't go and pick up physical books that often but so far this year I, I've been going every couple of weeks and I do have a library book I got last week or so. I haven't had a chance to get to it yet and I've still got a couple of weeks left of my loan so I'm going to be reading Our Hideous Progeny by C.E. McGill. First of all, this cover is so pretty. This was, I think, the Waterstones book of the month in, I want to say it was February. Could have been January. I don't know. Either way, there was a moment when it was on a deal and I wanted to buy it and I didn't. So I placed a library hold on it and it was on loan and I finally got it. This is about the great niece of Victor Frankenstein. She is a very, very ambitious woman in Victorian times and she is craving, just she has such a desire to make a name for herself in the world of science but as as the timing of this book um, probably suggests, she's not having the best luck and she comes across her great uncle's notes. She comes across Victor Frankenstein's notes and 
I don't know what's going to happen after that, but I think this is going to be really good. A lot of my friends have raved about this and, and I think I'm going to love it. Rule number two, two, one, two, a hyped book. Prompt number two was a blue prompt, which was a hyped book. How could I not go with Where Sleeping Girls Lie by Farida? A VK I am Maidy. This book came out in March. This is one of the books that I have been trying to wedge, wedge into my TBR because I am so, so excited about this book. This book is about um Shadi, who is at a very prestigious uh, school for, I want to say, based on the names of the houses, I follow this author on Instagram. I don't follow a lot of authors on Instagram just because sometimes... I might get an accidental spoiler because I'm maybe not the quickest at getting to new releases but I do follow this author who loves Fall Out Boy about as much as I do so I feel we should be friends. Um, she has been sharing the names of the houses in the school which make me think that it's a school for like academically gifted in the ways of perhaps science. I don't know, making stuff up. And Shadi's roommate goes missing like the first day that she's there and suddenly she is the talk of the school and not, not under the best circumstances. And then another student shows up dead and you know there are some things going on at this school. I loved Ace of Spades so I'm so excited to have another book by this author. It's a bit of a, a big old book and I am just ready. I've had a few friends that read this when it came out, a few that got advanced copies. I, this comes again highly recommended and it's one of my most anticipated reads of the year. Roll number three. A one. <laughs> um, pink. Great! A book over 500 pages. <laughs> Roll number three was a pink prompt and that's a book over 500 pages which I've just added to my list but it's okay because I have another highly anticipated read that I want to get onto my TBR, The Poisons We Drink by Bethany Baptiste. This is another of my anticipated March reads. It's 560 pages and this is about a, it's set in a world where there's people who can do magic and there's people who can't and this, our protagonist, makes potions. She makes like very potent love potions which are, are very dangerous and uh, her mother, her mother is killed and she is given the opportunity to get revenge. The person who killed her mother, she just needs to brew a very powerful potion that will kind of allow somebody to take control of the politicians who are setting legislation in DC and basically change, change their country in ways that I don't know yet. Um, there will be some corruption, I'm sure. I'm very excited about this. Another of my anticipated reads. Very excited about this. Rule number four. 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Pink again. Reread a favourite. Rule four is another pink prompt and it's a reread. I'm going with And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. This is my second favourite Agatha Christie book. It's also gorgeous, gorgeous edition. I haven't actually read this physical copy yet. This is probably the book that created the foundation for my love of um, books where people are picked off one by one, ideally in an isolated setting, because that is what this book is about. We have a whole bunch of strangers that are invited for various reasons to a house on a remote island. While they are there, certain things happen. They realise they are isolated and one by one, they fall down. And you're left trying to work out what is the link between these people? Who, who is killing them? Why are they killing them? This is a book I have read multiple times. I have seen every adaptation of it. And every time I read it or watch it, I just think it's so clever because I know who done it and I know why they did it. I know, I know, I know all the things, but I still think it's so clever because even knowing 
the who, what, where, when, whys, I'm still thinking, oh, it's amazing. Like, it's so good. I think it's such a clever, a clever book and it has inspired so many other fantastic books and films. Rule number five, four. One, two, three, four. Another pink uh, reading goal. Rule five was another pink prompt. Pink's my favourite colour, so let's go with it. This was a book that kind of helps me meet a reading goal. So I have decided to go with an ebook, which will help for my Kindle crush goal. And it also, the title will help with Kayla's buzzword. And the buzzword is anything to do with like the earth, flora and fauna. I'm kind of going, but I'm also thinking elements count. Snow So White by C. Gawkle. I got this book on my Kindle, who knows when, and it is a Snow White retelling. I will happily read fairy tale retellings over and over and over. I love them. So I think I'm going to enjoy this one based 100% on the fact that I usually do. Number six. One. Uh, a free pick. Um, rule number seven, maybe. A tan. Nope. One, two, three, four, five, six. The end. Rule number six, this was my final rule, was a free pick. So I went with the last of my anticipated reads that I will be I will be doing a vlog about them anyway because I'm so excited. Uh, I'm going with Lore of the Wilds by Annalise Sprana. First of all, I mean, can we just talk about how gorgeous the book covers are for 2024 releases? I feel like like the game has just been stepped up. This is stunning. This is a fantasy, as I believe you could probably tell. And we have a protagonist who lives in the woods inside a, like a, a, their village is in basically a forest prison. They are trapped. Any attempt at escape is not recommended. She's failed before and she ends up making a deal with um the Lord of the Fae. He wants something from a library, but he can't enter the library. So he gets our protagonist to make a deal with him. And also this book has a love triangle. A love triangle. Yes, love triangle. This has, I know it features a really cool library that I'm very excited about. Again, I follow this author on Instagram too. And she has just been gushing about how excited she was for this book coming out. I've been excited about this book coming out. And every little nugget of information I'm getting about it just makes me think, I'm going to love it. And I'm so excited. This is actually one of the smaller, <laughs> the smaller books on my TBI this month. But I'm very excited. So those are my rules. And tech, I tend to consider the success of my TBR game based on books that I roll. I also add on books that I don't manage to get on that list. Books that help me fulfil my reading goals for various months. But these are also books that I might, I might change, I might sub these, some of these books for other ones. They're not set in stone. Whereas the books that I roll, they're set in stone. Carve, carve it into stone. They are, they are set. But the other ones, not so much. So I have already got my Read Christie book sorted with And Then There Were None. This will fulfill my Read Christie prompt, which is to read a book published in the 1930s. This book came out in 1939. I have got my Crush Your Kindle and my Kayla's Buzzword. That is being met by Snow So White. And I have my diverse baseline books. First up is a book that has either chronic illness or chronic pain representation. I'm going with Get a Life, Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. I have not read this book, but I know it's beloved. I know that there, it's a trilogy about the the um the sisters. There are three of them. I believe this is a romance, and it's about Chloe Brown, <laughs> who is chronically ill and basically sets herself a list of goals of things that she wants to achieve. Hi. The cat has come in and he's he's confused because there are books on the bed. I'm sorry. I don't have a cat. 
he's not mine. Um, next prompt was to have a book that is by a Middle Eastern North African author. And I am going with The Parisian, which is by Isabella Hamad. This book, again, again, chucking on all the huge books to my TBR this month. It's not like April's my stressful month or anything. Let's have some hefty books. Uh, I have wanted to read this book for so long, but it's, it's big, so I've kind of felt a little bit intimidated by it. But it's in good company in April. And this book is about Kamal who moves to Paris in 1914. He moves from Palestine to Paris to study medicine under like a very um, well-established, well-respected doctor and there he falls in love. But you know it's not all roses because timing and the world it's it's I think it's gonna be I think I'm gonna cry. I think I'm gonna sob cry at everything but I think I'm really gonna cry at this book and I have heard that the writing is beautiful so I'm very much looking forward to it. And the final book that's going on my TBR for April is I needed to pick a book that was about colonization so I took to Google and I don't know if this book is actually about colonization if it turns out it's not then I will need to find a replacement book but Google has told me that this is so I'm going with She is a Haunting by Trang San Tran. This is about a woman who is in Vietnam and she is helping her family fix up a basically decaying, dilapidated house. And she is hiding the fact that she is not straight from her family. She's kind of keeping that, keeping that secret. And the house, I know the house is haunted. I know this is a ghosty story. And there's a ghost, like the ghost is a bride who is giving like advice to our protagonist. And I don't really know too much more. It's not that long in contrast to all the other books. Um, But this, I've purposely been putting this book aside for this month. I'm going to be really annoyed if it turns out that I've made a mistake and I've picked the wrong book and I could have read this earlier. So we will find out. We'll find out together. Okay. So the I feel like the board was ridiculously kind to me because I managed to get the all of the books that I wanted to read, that I was going to read in April anyway, that I wanted to prioritise. I got them on my list. So here's my TBR for April. It is nine books. I have an ebook as well. It's quite large. I always feel if the book stack is larger than your head that that's quite hefty. I don't have that big a head. So yeah, I'm so excited about these. If you've read any of these books, please let me know how you got on with them. I'm ridiculously excited about each and every one of them. I always get really worried in April because it's such a stressful month. But I've got some amazing books that I plan to read and I think I really just think I'm going to have such a good time with them all. I'm so excited. I'm going to, I'm going to torment the cat with love. I'm just going to pat him. Um, thank you so much for watching. Bye!